I think it's it's important again for us to recognize the importance of our expertise, our experiences, the things like we've been there and we've done that, and how how much this adds to our efficacy and our ability to get things done. But also, on the other hand, like to be able to then separate from that and move forward in ways where we're not necessarily leveraging that, and that really is more as being a coach and a facilitator. And so, I think it, uh, just as an experiment, as someone comes up to you and they're asking you. A difficult question maybe how, how do you in that moment not give the answer how do you in that moment not think about what's happened to you in the past and like be going through your kind of database of experiences how do you in that moment just actually best help that individual who's talking to you understand their database of moments to reflect on what things are like for them and how they're experiencing it i think on a one-to-one -one perspective that's powerful as we're working in organizations at this organizational level, is the organization working in a way that they think well-being is important and burnout is something that we'd like to try to, to decrease? And so if so, um, what's being done about this? And so I, I think about from a system level, is, is the organization thinking about burnout and well-being? And so as an emergency physician and I go see a patient, there are vital signs. And so if I see a patient and try to make a diagnosis without looking at vital signs, I'm not a very good emergency physician. For organizations, there are vital signs, and I think burnout well-being is one of those vital signs. And so we look at cost, and we look at revenue, and we look at quality and those sorts of things, but we also need to be looking at the well-being, the burnout rates of the individuals that we're employing. If we're not looking at that, like long-standing, it's not gonna be a healthy thing for the organization. You know, I was, I was just thinking about like, is. We, we call these things meetings, but are they oftentimes meetings? People think they, they like, I hate meetings, but oftentimes meetings are not really meetings. Like we're actually getting together and meeting each other and exchanging ideas. It's oftentimes tellings or I, I don't know, there, there's lots of other kind of adjectives that go in there to replace the word meeting that isn't what's occurring. And so how do we create a workplace where we're actually getting together and we're talking about things and understanding what different people are, are perceiving and how do we move forward? I give a, a talk to all the new Mayo Clinic physicians and scientists, and I'll ask them, I'll say, how many of you can name like the four chambers of the heart? And, and everyone raises their hand. And, and things like, how, like what are the uh, 12 cranial nerves? All of them will raise their hand. And then I'll say, so what are the components of well-being? And there's silence. And so I'm speaking to individuals, and, and I'm, I'm, it's likely the people who are listening to this, this, to this don't necessarily they can't necessarily say what are the components of well-being. And so would it be nice to have a language about this thing that we're trying to get to well-being and as we're moving away towards burnout? And so for me, the, the thing that's helpful for me is thinking about this thing called psychological well-being, also called eudaimonic well-being. And then this is different from hedonic. So hedonic well-being is like, last night I went out and had drinks and ate a whole bunch and that was great. That's not the kind of well-being I'm talking about. So it's psychological long-term, like how we're actually assimilating the world and feeling about ourselves. And there are different parts of well-being. And so I, as a physician, like mnemonics. And so the pagers, P is purpose. And so this is the sense that we are aligned with the purpose of the organization and the values of the individuals that we're working with. A in pagers is autonomy. And this is the sense that we're being heard. So G is personal growth. Do we feel like today we're having an opportunity to be better than who we were yesterday? E is environmental mastery. And this is the, like, do we have the things, the resources that we need to get the job done? R is relations, positive relations with others. We've talked about that. And then um, the final one, which is interestingly and, and, and interesting is that self-acceptance. And so our, our, our sense of being able to accept that we, at times, um, do things that we would not have wanted to have done if we were to look retrospectively or even a, a, you know, forward, that we make mistakes. And so on the one hand, we have to want to change. We have to want to have this kind of growth mindset. And on the other hand, we have to think that things don't change in giant leaps. They, think in, they, they change in small steps. Mm -hmm. And so wouldn't it be so great if we could be like this, this, this whole person we envision, which is perfect in the future, 
but it's not like we can just put on clothes and be that person. We have to be trying things on. We have to kind of walk with them and see what's comfortable and what's not comfortable. And, and through those experimentations, be, be, be identifying those parts that we like and the parts that we don't like and learning from there. So, so very much as we're developing as individuals, as we're developing as leaders, we are really kind of trying things on for a moment, which, which oftentimes feels quite inauthentic. It's a process just to get to there. You know, I was, I'm different now than when I was 20 years old. I'm different than when I was a baby. Like, I can do different. I was just able to, like, move from crawling to standing. At that time, I was, probably wasn't going to be a good leader. And so then I'm 20, you know, and I'm just out of, high, like, I don't know, like, second year of, of college or whatever that is. I'm probably a better leader now than I was then. And and each of us, as we're in organizations, like, we have these arcs of our career where hopefully we're getting better this month versus the previous month. And so I think uh, our best leaders are able to understand that. And so a lot of times we're talking about disengagement and quiet quitting and things like that right now. It may be that this individual is at a moment in their life where they need to maybe less focus this week, this month, this quarter on this work task. And they need to be focusing on family or they need to be focusing on these other things that are going on in their life. Or they need to be focusing on this thing of personal growth that they're going to be learning a whole bunch from. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe. And to stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Action Catalyst Podcast and on Twitter at Catalyst underscore Action. And thanks for listening.